and then they're going to try and put me, guys like me in jail. Happens every time. So anyway, is why I don't save money is because in 1971, the dollar became debt and taxes. This is real financial education, what they don't teach you at school. So there's three kinds of people in the world when it comes to money. There's an investor, a trader, and a speculator. I am an investor. I wasn't a trader. A trader is somebody's going to buy it and sell it. Like in real estate, there's kind of a flipper. They buy a house to flip it. That's what traders do. And a speculator is a gambler. And I would say most people who are chasing Doge coins and all this other stuff and Bitcoin, and they're speculators. They're all kind of gamblers hoping it'll go up. That's not what I do. I am an investor. You see, and the guys who are losing money right now is because you're not a trader, you're a speculator. And one is because in 1944, there was a thing called the Bretton Woods Agreement. So in 1944 at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, the U.S. government promised we will back the U.S. dollar with gold. But as you know, the U.S. lies a lot. <laughs> so everybody in the world says, okay, we'll accept the dollar because it's as good as gold. Because why would you save money? Because after 1971, the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not a bank, it's not federal, there's no money in it, and the U.S. Treasury can print money. The savers are losers. And the school teachers are still telling people to save money. The Fed wants to take this out. The European Central Bank, the ECB, wants to take it out. The Bank of Japan wants to take it out. The Bank of China wants to take it out. You see, the only way the money can go into the marketplace right now is the Fed prints money. They give the money to commercial banks like U.S. Bank and Bank of America and Wells Fargo, and they lend the money out. But if the Fed coin comes out, they don't need these banks. And the only way somebody could get money, they got a credit card, real estate, or a student loan, right? Because once they take these two away, then they go to Marxism or communism, UBI is universal basic income. And that's what they're doing, the stimulus checks. They're giving money straight to you. They don't need these guys anymore. They control your thoughts. They control your breathing. They control your injections. They control your money. They control how you get your money, how much you make, where you're spending it, where can you travel. They'll know everything about you. It's called totalitarianism. Between 1960 and 1980, my generation, the boomers, didn't like stocks because at my time of when I was a kid, everybody said anybody invests in the stock market is a gambler. Now everybody's in the stock market. So how did that happen? Well, in 1974, they brought this thing called a 401k out. I won't touch that thing. I would not touch a 401k or an IRA. I refuse to do that, but I don't have to do that because as an entrepreneur, I create my own assets. More than that is what you have to invest in. They had to do it because my generation wasn't investing in it. So that's why between 1960 and 1980, they didn't like stocks. So they, the 401k came out. Then what happened is in 1987, the stock market crashed. So Greenspan comes out, he's a Federal Reserve guy. Remember, the Federal Reserve is not American. It's not a government agency. So he came out and what Greenspan put was what I call a PPT. It's the Plunge Protection Team, or also called the Greenspan put, or also what people say, don't fight the Fed. Basically what Greenspan did is every time the stocks crashed, the plunge protection team would protect you. So my generation, the boomers are going, well, I don't have to worry because every time the market crashes, the Federal Reserve Bank and the Treasury will bail me out. So that's today we have our U.S. corporations, our zombie, 20% of U.S. corporations are zombie corporations. It means they're broke, but they're being propped up by the Federal Reserve Bank and the government. That's communism. So anyway, stocks get protected. Gold is a good investment because the Fed, all the central banks in the world now own gold. So they're not going to let gold crash. They'll do something to make sure the price of gold stays up. So I don't like stocks, but I like gold. Uh, silver is getting more valuable because all the gold never disappears. It just keeps piling up. So here's stocks. The government will make sure it doesn't crash. Gold will not crash, but crypto could. You know why? Because the Fed doesn't want it. 
So guys, you got to be smarter because what possibly that hasn't happened yet is a Fed coin or a Yuan coin, a Chinese coin, and that'll destroy the Bitcoin. So what I'm saying is it's all manipulated. You know, it's 100% manipulated. What happened in 1980 was the Hunt brothers from Texas tried to corner the gold market by manipulating silver. So silver hit $50 an ounce in 1980. It's interesting what's going on. So, it's, But just as you guys know, in the big picture, it's all manipulated, which is why you've got to be smarter. So if there's a Fed coin, Wells Fargo is gone. I'm not saying this is going to happen. This is my prediction of what might happen. Don't say I'm saying it's going to go out and all this stuff. At the same time, if a Fed coin comes in, it wipes me out because the way I get my money is I have great credit. And like I said, just last week, Ken McElroy and I borrowed $160 million. That's the only way money gets into the system is guys like us, capitalists, have to borrow money. School teachers can't even get a credit card or they get a student loan. What a ripoff that is. But a guy like me will go out there and use debt. I use debt to acquire assets and I pay no taxes. But they'll never teach you that in school. That's why there's no financial education. That's why my poor dad was a Marxist and he taught people that capitalists are crooks. And now there's crooks everywhere. You know, there's, there's even crooked ministers. Obama likes those guys. So it's not the money, it's the person. And our school system's intentionally designed not to teach you about money. An asset is a noun, like a house. Cash flow is a verb. So to understand if it's an asset or liability, it takes a noun plus verb. So if the cash is flowing out of your pocket, it's a liability. If the cash is flowing into your pocket, it's an asset. So I own 7,000 rental properties. Those are assets. Every month, the cash flows in. Whereas many people have the big house on the hill and the cash is flowing out and they're going broke. The other thing the poor don't understand is the number one expense for most people is taxes. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income, earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income because I'm working for it. If I buy, let's say, Apple for $10 and I send it for 20, that's portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. And so all these guys are screaming right now in America, tax the rich. I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know the three kinds of income. And the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, you know, sent the kid to school. They don't learn this. The tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. McDonald's is in the real estate business, so they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate, so they pay no taxes. When I came back from Vietnam in 73, my poor dad said, get your MBA. And my rich dad laughed. You're going to turn out to be an employee. Who else hires guys with MBAs? You know what I mean? He was just pragmatic about it. He says, if you really want to be a rich, take a class on real estate. And I said, why is that? He says, once you understand real estate is based on debt. And he says, you will learn how to use debt as money. Because that's what happened in 71. The U.S. dollar became debt. So once you learn how to use debt as money, you can never say, I can't afford it. After the crash of 2008, the banks gave me $300 million tax-free to buy real estate that the idiots had lost. And they were idiots because the prices were so high. Why would you buy it at the top of a market? Don't you know that's going to crash? They all, oh, no, no. This is, you know, that was the subprime, was the derivatives market, the MBSs and all that stuff had driven the price of real estate so high and the rest of us were just waiting. And then when the whole thing came crashing down, all this real estate was now available and they needed, you know, the, the Fed and those guys in the Treasury needed guys like us to go in there. So Wall Street gave us hundreds of millions of dollars to mop up all that real estate these guys had lost. Now, it's fair because everybody could do it. When I asked the average guy, 
why don't you use debt? They can't even get a loan because their scores are so bad. So that's what's going on in the world today. They think the rich are crooks. The rich just play by different laws. So now we have the stock market, this one area of the economy, all-time highs, floating on fake money. Real estate, I mean, I don't know how people can afford to live in New York. I was looking at a condo for 55 million. You know, real estate in Silicon Valley, you, you can't afford to live there. And then all these companies started borrowing money, so the economy's good, and, you know, unemployment's low and all this. They say there's no inflation, but have you seen the price of food, real estate, and student loans, and medical? It's a bubble, you know? So now what's going to happen is the baby boomers, my generation, are going to start to retire. And there's no money there. Social Security is broke. Pensions are broke. The students are broke. They're screwing everybody with debt. This is called, not economics, this is called bubble-nomics. But they'll never teach you this in school. And why do they keep printing money? Because they want to save something. Because it's an addiction. You know, this is like heroin. The moment you take that one hit, they say, okay, I'll quit next week. And the economy gets worse, so they keep going. Trump gave us a tax cut in America. This thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what happened in 2008, they stopped it by printing money. They call it the Great Recession. But they didn't really fix anything. You know, derivatives went from 700 trillion to 1.2 trillion today. Twice as much. And that is net. You know, that's not doesn't tell the whole story. So when the recession hit, the PhD standard came in. That was Bernanke, you know. And then Yellen, the PhD said, they have PhDs. Well, it's no different than long-term capital, LTCM. They had Nobel Prize winners, people like my poor dad, academics, you know. This is what's going on in the world economy today. So the baby boomers are going to retire now. Student loans are bust. So do you have to be an economist to say what's going to happen? We're fighting a 12-year war now. Entitlements are going through the roof. National debt to GDP is 109 in America, 109 percent. 90 percent is too late. We have to keep printing now.